thank you so much for having me and thanks to the organizers for bringing us all here. I'm going to talk about large N, uh, holography and black holes a little bit. This is work I did with a number of people, but most importantly, these two excellent postdocs. Uh, okay, so the motivation is kind of simple. We all know that Z should be equal to Z, right? Uh, and this was uh, the motivation for many of the speakers before me. Uh, so the whole idea of the talk is to kind of explore Z equal to Z in the context where the Z of the CFT with some sources can be computed exactly by supersymmetric localization and exploit this in the large N limit to try to learn something about the other Z. Um, okay, this, um, at least in principle, should give us some control on about how to go beyond the leading supergravity approximation. Uh, and maybe learn about ADS and vacuum with fluxes and maybe learn about black holes. Okay, so all of this is very broad. In this talk, I'm gonna focus on, uh, sorry, for some reason there's this, I'm not sure why the, the bottom of the screen shows, but anyway, uh, in, in this talk, I'm gonna focus on 3D CFTs and their ADS for duals in M theory, okay? Uh, so that's the plan. I'm gonna t tell you a little bit about ABGM on S3, and then I'm gonna move on to this other partition function, which is some kind of an index, a simpler index uh, than the one Samir was talking about. Uh, and then I will make some comments about holography in black holes, and then I'll explain that all of this is, is not only a feature of ABGM, but it's broadly valid for all examples that I know of, of such C C CFTs with explicit duals. Okay, ABGM on S3. So what is ABGM? It's a chern simons matter theory of the type that that we heard about this morning, except that I'm insisting on having some amount of supersymmetry, quite a bit of supersymmetry, n equals to six or more. Uh, so it, it, it has an integer n specifying the rank of the gauge group and an integer k um, specifying the chern simons level. It has a specific superpotential and n equals to two notation. And its claim to fame is that it should be describing the low energy physics of n m2 brains in m theory on this space. There's at least two interesting limits one can study, large n limits. Uh, one is when, when you have large n and fixed value of k, this should be dual to the n theory limit where the bulk is ADS4 times S7 mod zk with a smooth or default action here. Uh, and then if you scale n and k uh, being large, but the ratio being fixed, you, are, sh you should be into the 2a uh, string theory limit and this is the map for the string coupling and lambda. Okay, so all of this is, should be a review for most of you. Uh, what was done with this model is that if you put it on S3, you'll keep all of the supercharges, the superconformal charges, and you can actually do supersymmetric localization and show that the path integral of the theory on S3 localizes to a matrix integral. So, and, and it looks like this, and this, Matrix integral has been analyzed at large n with a variety of tools. I'm not going to give an overview of the tools. Uh, specifically, with this last tool, there's some map to somewhat exotic Fermi gas, which allowed these people to essentially compute this at large n up to non-perturbative terms. And the answer looks like this, okay? So the path integral at large n has uh, corrections of order e to the minus uh, square root of n, which should mean uh, you know, some kind of m2 instantons. But the, the rest of the answer resums into a nice explicit function. So there's an airy function, and there's this constant uh, c here in terms of the level k, and there's a b, which shifts n in a certain way, and there's this order one prefactor, which has some explicit form. Okay, uh, so that's a QFT answer, but it should have a meaning in the bulk at large n. So if you expand this at large n, the log of this, the free energy, so to say, there's a 
series in one over n that looks like this. And so each of these terms should have a meaning in the bulk ADS4. Okay, another comment I want to make is that you can actually take this large n expansion and reorganize it and go to this two-way limit and find explicit examples for a, a, a string theory of free energies in two-way. So these answers here are genus 0, 1, 2, 3, worksheet genus, or they should be, uh, type 2A free energies. Uh, and a curious feature is that lambda gets shifted in such a way that these can be resummed exactly up to e to the minus a square root of lambda corrections. So for the string theorists in the audience, well, we should at some point learn how to, how to find these answers from the worksheet, I think. Okay, back to large n in this m theory limit. So I told you that the leading terms at large n in this answer look like this, and you can wonder how can I construct them from the bulk, ADS4. And this is relatively well known about the leading term. So this uh, leading term is already somewhat curious because I have a theory of n by n matrices, and somehow at large n I have a free energy that goes as n to the 3 halves instead of n squared. So this was, I think, when I was a child, this was a puzzle at some point. Uh, but now we, we understand how it happens, and this is essentially the downshell action of ADS4. The subleading term uh, here, n to the 1 half, arises from certain higher derivative terms in the bulk, in 11D supergravity, and then the log term is quite interesting. It comes from loops of the KK modes, if you wish, in the dual. So each of these terms has been recalculated, if you wish, from the ADS bulk. Uh, and there's an attempt to construct the full airy function with methods very, very similar to what was mentioned in the morning by Samir. I should say that I don't fully understand all the details of this paper, but I just want to bring it up here as a, you know, ambitious attempt. <clears throat> okay. One interesting thing that you can do, which is what we heard also from Shai, is to add a certain sources to this um, uh, conformally invariant path integral. And uh, if you want to use the same tools, or the supersymmetric localization tools, you can add only very specific sources so that you keep the supersymmetry, or at least the part of the supersymmetry. So you can squash a little bit the sphere, or, and you can add these real masses, M1, M2, and M3, which couple in a specific way to operators of the, of the IBJM theory. Uh, and so recently what has emerged out of all these papers is a conjecture slash a proof, a calculation, depending on who you ask, uh, about the full answer for, for this uh, path integral. Again, full answer up to uh, M2 instantons. And it looks like this. I'm just uh, flashing it out here to brag a little bit. Uh, and you can ask, what is this good for? And the answer was, again, someone alluded to in uh, the talk by Shai, and they've done amazing work to use answers like this to extract something about uh, M theory or two way string theory in, in the bulk. I will give you the simplest example of what you can extract out of this answer, which is the two point function of the energy momentum tensor to all orders in N. And the way that it works is that you take this squashed sphere partition function, which we have to all orders at large N, differentiate it with respect to the squashing, and that's an integrated two-point function of the energy momentum tensor, and you can extract this number, CT, which is the only dynamical information in the two-point function. <clears throat> okay, uh, so this was a summary of what happened on S3. So now I want to ask essentially the same question about some other interesting manifolds. This will be the rest of the talk. Any questions so far? No? Everyone's happy? Good. Uh, and I'll focus on one example, although we've worked with, with a few others, but this one is, is what I'm going to focus on. It's called the topologically twisted index. It's a funny name. I'll try to explain what this is. It's a partition function on, on, on a special manifold, S1 times a Riemann surface. 
I'll assume that this is a smooth hyperbolic Riemann surface for the rest of the talk, compact. And so what you do here is you follow Witten, which is usually a good idea, uh, uh, to, to do a little twist here on the Riemann surface with the U1R symmetry of the theory. This applies for all n equals to two CFTs. And then at low energy, you'll get some kind of an effective 1D theory, which is not a topological theory. So you keep some kind of non-trivial correlation functions, but they should be very simple. And uh, well, you can ask what is the, the path integral on this space? And these uh, people asked and answered the, the question for general matter coupled n equals to two Lagrangian theories, and they gave you horrendous looking uh, integrals to solve. And here's one of them for the ABGM theory. So the answer for this path integral in the presence of uh, supersymmetric sources looks like this. Okay, so don't be scared. Basically, I have um, the integers n and k, which uh, specify the theory, and I have some analogs of these real masses, which I call delta, and these n are background magnetic fields for the flavor symmetries. Those are the parameters you know, compatible with, with SUSY, and I can ask, what is this answer at large n as a function of these uh, quantities? Okay, so th this looks complicated, but uh, ah, and these parameters should obey some constraints which are essentially due to, to um, n equals to two supersymmetry. You can think of these deltas and n's as associated with the cartons of the SO8R symmetry uh, if, if you have uh, k equals one or two, and this is just ensuring that you keep two supercharges. Okay? Like gauge fluxes. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So here I have to sum over the fluxes of the two gauge fields on the Riemann surface. So this is a part of the path integral. So it's a sum and an integral I have to do, indeed. And this is an important point. Uh, good. I, and I have two integrals because I have two um, vector multiplets. Yeah. Uh, well, what I think is, is amazing is that you can rewrite this answer doing some kind of a fancy version of the residue theorem uh, as a sum over residues. This was done by uh, these people, Benine Zafaloni, and the answer looks like this. And to find the values at each residue, you have to solve. So the price that you have to pay is that you have a complicated algebraic uh, problem. But after all, this conference is called gravity from algebra, and this is an example of that. Uh, so you have some algebra to solve here. I have to solve for these x's uh, in terms of the y's. I have to solve 2n algebraic equations, which they call my beta ansatz equations, which in certain audiences introduces some confusion. There's no integrability that I know of here. They look like beta ansatz equations. And if you solve these and put them back in the formula, you would get the answer for uh, the path integral. So that's the claim. Okay, and this B is some kind of Jacobian matrix. The details are not important, uh, and the first thing that you could do with this is to apply some kind of a saddle point approximation. So this was done by Benini Cristo Zafaloni in, in a beautiful paper, uh, and their goal was to ask whether this index goes as n to the three halves. There's some evidence from a dual black hole, which I'm going to show, that, that it must scale with n. Uh, and so this was essentially uh, their target. And they, using a certain ansatz for these eigenvalues, they uh, were able to get that. And so what we did is we said, well, I mean, for various reasons, I don't know how to push this beyond the leading large n order. With, with this method. And so we kind of brute forced it. So this is not a very intelligent method usually, but sometimes it works. So what we did is we said, okay, let's do, uh, let's assume that n is of order a few hundred and ask Mathematica to solve these equations that I showed you uh, in the neighborhood of this infinite n solution. And then you'll find roots of those 2n equations, so a few hundred equations that you have to solve, and you do this endless times, okay? Way too many times. 
And then you guess an analytic answer, okay, based on the numbers. And this is how it looks. So our claim, even though we don't have an analytic way to obtain this at the moment, is that this index at large n looks like this, and this is the full answer up to e to the minus a square root of n corrections. And we can actually compute the leading e to the minus square root of uh, square root of n. We don't know. I don't know. So this was only a hint for where to look for the roots of, of those tabeta answers. I, I don't have a large n saddle point way of correcting the first one. Yeah. So, okay. So this is an answer obtained by doing extensive numerics. And there's some details here. These uh, real mass parameters appear and also these uh, uh, fluxes n and so on. What I want to emphasize is that this is an exact answer up to e to the minus square root of n. So it resums the large n expansion in terms of this strangely looking n hat parameter. Uh, so th this is the analog of the ARE function that I showed you before, but it's a much simpler function. Okay. Uh, and there's a particularly simple limit of this index. The way to think about this is that you, you kind of switch off these real masses and you turn the minimal amount of background magnetic field that you can, which is the background associated with our symmetry. This is kind of the minimal thing uh, you should do to even have this index. And if this sounds too mathematical, what we're doing here is the physics of the, long, the lowest Landau level. I have some uh, fields, fermions on S1 times a Riemann surface, and I'm putting some flux, and I'm asking what are the zero modes and what is their physics, and they sh yeah, this is what this thing is actually computing. Yeah. I will have some comments to, to make. So the first and obvious comment is that n hat is a function of the real masses, so it's not really that thing that you're thinking about. But yeah. So people have tried to explain this shift for the area function, this uh, whatever, n minus bk from m theory. There's a partial explanation of the shift, but not of the full shift. So there should be some kind of explanation, but that's, I think, an open, an open question. But it's certainly not a simple explanation because of the appearance of the, of the real masses here, which are continuous parameters. So it should not be whatever, some topological shift of the charge or something like this. Okay, and in this case, we could actually access very accurately also this order one number here, and I'm just again bragging with some exact uh, numbers here for low values of k. We can estimate this um, very accurately. Um, good. And as I said, this, we're pretty certain of this formula. Actually, in this case, we pushed this to even higher values of n to n 500 or so, and we're able to fit the e to the minus uh, square root of n term and compute both the coefficient here in front of the exponent as well as the coefficient in front of e, uh, quite accurately, I think. In the string theory, limit similar results are not. There you go. <laughs> so using this, if you believe what I told you, I can just resum again. I mean, it's, it's not obvious that you can resum this into 2a. At least it was not obvious to us. But there we go. So you, you'll get predictions now for the, the world sheet three energies with these different boundary conditions now. So before I had ADS4 times S7 or CP3, with a, with a sphere on the boundary. Now I have S1 times the Riemann surface. So that will change the answer. And indeed, if you look at the numbers here, they do change compared to the sphere, but the shift of lambda is exactly the same. So this is again a hint of how the, the, you know, the alpha prime expansion should reorganize in, in, into these models. And at lambda equals zero, you can reproduce this from the theory? Uh, I, I cannot. Uh, I don't know how to do it from in this or or I haven't tried. Uh, for the sphere, people have have looked at this. Yeah, uh, yeah, Marino, I think, and collaborators. Indeed. Um, okay, 
So this is essentially some exact or whatever. Uh, yeah. And again, someone in the audience, I hope, can obtain all of this from the worksheet one day. Good. What is this good for apart from, you know, claiming that you have evaluated something exactly up to instantons? Well, it teaches you, I think, something about black holes. And this example teaches you something about a very specific class of black holes. They're kind of simpler versions of what was uh, mentioned in the morning by Samir because they do not have angular momentum. Okay? So the black holes look like this. So the solutions, I should say, the saddle points, the Euclidean 4D supergravity saddle point looks like this. So it's a Euclidean background. It has some metric function which is analytically known. There's a choice of a Riemann surface which should be the horizon if it's a black hole. And there's some free electric charge. So for all values of Q, you have supersymmetry, but the magnetic charge is entirely fixed by the problem. And this is a, a, an essentially supergravity analog of the Witten twist, that you lock the magnetic field in terms of the metric. OK? So this is one of these smooth backgrounds that were mentioned in the morning. They uh, cap off smoothly in the bulk. Uh, and to have that, so you need to ensure that the period of, uh, of, of tau, the S1 on the boundary, has some um, specific form. Good. Uh, and what happens is that the on-shell action of these things is independent of this Q. So for every value of Q, you have the same on-shell action. Uh, which is interesting because Q going to zero is exactly the limit which allows you to uh, analytically continue this uh, saddle point to Lorentzian signature where you find the extremal magnetic Eisner Nordstrom in ADS. Yes? Looks real to me. Uh, yeah. No, you don't. The reason is that the way that you keep supersymmetry here is different from the the, the index, the superconformal index, where you you keep Susie by rotation essentially by fibering a little bit the S1 over the S2. Whereas here I'm doing a twist on part of the space, so it's a it's it's an easier object I think, but it's still a black hole. You know, you can go and go to the bank, to the black hole bank, and say I have a black hole, and it is and it is one. And, and of course, uh, since, you know, uh, with the work from 50 years ago or so, we, we know that this onshell action should be minus the entropy. And uh, so, well, we, we found the entropy of the black hole in this case. I don't have to do a Legendre transform here. I mean, this ensemble where, you know, the, the magnetic charge is fixed. Okay. Oh, good, good, good. So, I call it extremal because in the limit Q going to zero, which is the limit where I can get a good Lorentzian background, something funny happens with, uh, with beta. It, it explodes. It, it becomes an infinite circle. Okay, so my claim is that this is the background uh, for which this index uh, is, is good for at large n. Uh, to make a connection with 11D, I need to uplift this in some way to end theory. And there's infinitely many uplifts. So the claim to fame is that this is a solution of 40N equals to 2 minimal supergravity, so Einstein Maxwell theory. And this model admits infinitely many uplifts in, in M theory, where you have to specify an, uh, an internal Sasaki Einstein manifold, basically. And so one manifold that you can choose is the sphere, and you have to think of it as a U1 bundle over CP3. And then you just shove in here the 4D solution and use the electric field of the 4D solution to determine the, the flux on the internal space. So, Sorry. Did you say Einstein Maxwell Einstein with a cosmological constant. Sorry, yes, yes. Gauge, I, I, did I say, yeah, 4D equals to gauge supergravity and then, yes. I said all adjectives. Good. Uh, uh, so the claim is that we have some index that should that should be related to the path integral of, of 11D supergravity around this background. 
And indeed, you can go and do some checks of this, of this claim, and they go very much like uh, the ones I told you about this here. The leading term has to do with somehow with the volume of the internal space, with this on-shell action of the, the two derivative 11D supergravity. The subleading term, then to the one-half term, with some uh, painful analysis that I told some, some of you last week about, uh, uh, we, we were able to actually compute. And then the log term, uh, there's a paper that claims to get exactly this number, the coefficient of the log, out of uh, KK modes running in loops. Um, okay, and this is only the tip of the tip of an iceberg, uh, 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 because we also have similar results for many other ADS4 black holes with scalar fields, uh, vector multiplets, and so on. But what I want to emphasize is that this index that we computed to all orders in n uh, should give you should give you an all order. So it should complete this uh, dot 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 here. And at the moment, I don't have a good idea how to compute or check that in M theory uh, or 11D supergravity. Okay, I have a few more minutes. I just want to tell you that none of what I told you is very specific to ABGM. You can go and find a list of 3DN equals to two or more holographic CFTs with explicitly known bulk duos and, well, r run again the same logic for them. And this index looks essentially has exactly the same structure. That there's some shifted N. So you don't have to know what these models are. There's some specific internal manifolds that keep less uh, uh, supersymmetry. But the structure of this answer, there's some n which gets modified by you know, the parameters of the internal space in a certain way. And there is an n hat to the 3 half, n hat to the 1 half, a log n, and, and a finite piece. And again, all of these are equal up to e to the minus square root of n correction. So this clearly calls for some kind of understanding more um, fundamentally than what we just did. But at the moment, I don't have anything intelligent to say here. Uh, and of course, in each of these examples, there's a bulk black hole of the same kind of uh, type for which this reproduces the entropy. Okay, uh, good, I'm almost done. What I told you about is some kind of exact up to instantons uh, large n partition functions of ABGM on two different manifolds. And I told you how this relates to the dual M theory. Uh, and we seem to learn something about the entropy of these black holes, and then all of this extends to other models with small amount of supersymmetry. Okay, what's the homework list? Well, it's kind of long. Uh, so one thing that I've already alluded to is that this can be extended to other models, and we're thinking about applying it also to things that are not in M theory, but in 2A or 2B. Uh, it would be very nice to have some kind of analytic understanding of these simple expressions. They really, I mean, they, 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 they really should be derived appropriately, but uh, I don't know how at the moment. Uh, we can do also other uh, indices, specifically this index, which was mentioned in, in the morning, the superconformal index. Here, uh, we have to do another limit, what's called the Cardi-like limit. So you take large values of the angular momenta, so the S1 is much smaller than the S2, and in this limit at each order, the, for the first two order in this, in this Cardi-like expansion, we have all order in large n answers for the index. Uh, as Chai asked, it would be nice to understand why we have these very specific shifts of n, what structure in n theory is responsible for that, uh, and in general, understand higher derivative terms in, in 11D, which was also mentioned by Shai. I would like to have also some kind of control of the type uh, that Samir mentioned. So he was doing localization in 4D ungauged supergravity. This here is, you know, so sounds like a small modification when you add a cosmological constant, but it seems non-trivial to me. Uh, and then, well, I would really like for some kind of OSV type conjecture to exist for asymptotically ADS black holes. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you.
Questions? Um, I, I was curious when you were presenting the other N equal two examples, all of the log and hat corrections are exactly the same coefficient. Oh, this one, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why is that? You're asking a bulk question or? No, a CFT question. I don't have a good answer for the CFT question. Uh, is it because of the number supersymmetry? Or? I don't think so, because they have a varying ah, sorry, they number have of supercharges. Yeah. And it's the same one half. Exactly. So Yeah, so there's some conjecture that this has to do with the, so the precise coefficient for the, the sphere was one quarter, and here is one half. It has to do with the topology of the boundary. Uh, we're working on trying to explain all of these coefficients from properly studying the KK modes running in loops at the moment. So I okay. may be able to give you a bulk answer at some point, but yeah, I don't but have a good... Uh, I see, uh, because the examples that Tamir was discussing in the more in the ungauge case, the number supersymmetry affects the... the yeah, here the it's the same number for all uh, all of these. I think the reason is that here the, the, the black hole, so the theory has more SUSY, but the black hole always have two, two supercharges. Two Qs and two Ss. No, but okay, but that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't have a better answer okay. than that. Yeah. Uh, Shai and Ibu have questions. Do you have results in the ABGM case also for ABJ? So for different ranks of the gauge group? And in particular, I'm curious if you could have any possible interpretation of like a black hole in higher spin gravity than, yeah, say, I, in that limit? Very good question. We have some numerics, but I don't think we're at the point where we can extract these uh, analytic expressions. But indeed, uh, it's an interesting question where you can access that machine. I don't know at the moment. So you have any SYM with NF fundamental? One, one R joint, I'm sorry. So it's the, the theory which at NF equals to 1 is exactly ABGM, and at, at higher values of NF, it's some N equals 40. When you say SYM, you mean John Simon? No, no John Simon's term. Pure young mills with one R joint and NF um, fundamentals, and this model is known to be, for NF equals to 1, to be mirror dual to ABGM at K equals 1, but otherwise it's some other theory. Close the IR to it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the dual is some Z and F orbifold of the sphere with, with a fixed point, and at the fixed point you have NF light uh, hypers, basically, coming uh, from a fixed point. And the other two theories, but do they have the same? Uh, yeah, yeah, so these other ones do, yes. These are like ABGM kind of quivers with some bells and whistles, and yeah. What's the hint about uh, the shift of N from uh, Bergman Hirano? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the question. What I know about the shift of N is this work of uh, Bergman Hirano, mm -hmm. where they uh, emphasize that when you compute charges in M theory, you may have to worry about this uh, famous C3 wedge X8 topological term, which is an eight uh, derivative term. Yeah. And that's kind of like a chern simons term, and it affects on the calculation of the charge. So that kind of explains a part of the shift at least um, for ADS4, empty ADS4, uh, but not the full shift for the ARI function. And certainly in these examples, because of what I told Shai, I mean, the shift is a continuous uh, function of the real masses. So it should not be explained by simple charge quantization arguments. This thing is a, you know, a real number. So I don't have a good answer. I would like to know. But is, is that a hint that there should be some anomaly polynomial sort of an argument? No, I, I would general. say no. I think there's some physics here. This is some kind of renormalization of J. Newton that happens in some way, but I don't have anything smarter to say. I don't think it's anomalies. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, you, you showed these uh, world sheet, uh, the things that should be uh, derivable uh, from a world sheet theory, um, but they have this singularity at lambda equals to 1 over 24, uh, at least for higher genus. Very good. Uh, Very good. So indeed, I should, I should be more 
careful, but it was kind of uh, tedious to always write plus e to the minus a square root of lambda. So Marcos Marino and uh, Pavel Putrov and collaborators have actually analyzed, at least for the sphere, not for this index. So to be more specific, uh, these quantities uh, have been computed, at least the first two, taking into account the e to the minus square root of lambda correction, and then you don't see anything special happen here. So these corrections are order one at this value of lambda, and they correct, and you get a finite answer. So there's no polar. There's anything. no issue with the, with the answer. So the, the thing that you mentioned is just an artifact from a large lambda-like expansion resumed. Yeah, so, but yeah. Very good question. In, in that case, there's connection between this matrix model and a topological string on a P1 times P1. I have no idea why there should be a connection like this. Uh, there may always be some topological st string computing these things, but I'm not sure. Any other questions? If not, let's thank Nikolai again. And Thank you very much. <laughs>